So we want to take that opportunity out right now because things always come from those reverbs. So you can't take it for granted. You know, you get up on the minbar and you give a chuppah and you say words in Arabic and you think, even if the person doesn't know the word, they can put it in context and understand. They can't understand that. So things pass over their head. They get things misunderstood. So the first thing we want to mention concerning today was really connected to the issues about the amana or taking care of the trust. And as I mentioned, everybody has a trust. Without any exception, we have responsibility. Even the young, the young brothers, who we want to stop moving around a lot and pay attention. Hey, the young brothers want me to stop. Even those guys also have a responsibility of the trust and that they don't go to school in the classroom and share the secrets of what's going on in the site and the privacy of their homes with everybody. We all have an amana. The young companion, Anis ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, the son of Um Sulaim, one of those tremendous companions and from the six that narrated the majority of the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent him on an errand and he told him, don't tell anybody what I'm telling you to do. Go do the errand. And then when he was on his way, his mother, who has a lot of manaqib about herself, she saw a boy, she asked her, boy, where are you going? The prophet sent me on a message. I'm going to take care of the message. She said, what was it? He said, I'm never going to divulge the secret of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the young companion was of the understanding back there that even the secret of someone is from what should be taken care of. But the first point I want to mention, uh, concerning the amana. It was about the amana, but I wanted to, to remind the people that part of the amana that we have with the Prophet Sallallahu is the amana of upholding the prestigious position of Ahlul Bayt in our religion. So if you are Muslim, you're going to look at Ahlul Bayt with a special way of looking. But it's, it's, it's religious. Can't go overboard this way or that way. That's what we have now. People are always going overboard. So the first point I wanted to mention about that, and it's really important concerning our Aqidah for these new brothers and sisters. First thing, listen. We all love Ali ibn Abi Talib, and we love his wife Fatima al Zahra, and we love Hassan and Hussein, and we love the other children of Ali, Um Kalthum, and other than them. We love them. But the first thing I want you guys to know and to understand is Hassan, Hussein, and Ali, they're not the best of the companions, although they're very virtuous. But I want to make this point very clear. And the aqidah of the people of the Sunnah is that the best of this ummah is Abu Bakr as siddiq and then Umar, and then Uthman, and then Ali. And then after those four, the six people after them who are promised the Jannah. And they're known as the Ashratun Mubashari. You have to believe this is our Aqidah. Because as we mentioned in our class to our Shabbat, if you go to an Iraq, if you go to an Iran, Pakistan, if you go to Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, you have those people who are over there who are in this hulu of Ahlul Bayt. You go to Bahrain, you go to Saudi Arabia, you go to Lebanon, you have people go overboard. We say, hey, Ali ibn Abi Talib is the fourth best person of this ummah. But Abu Bakr is better than him. More virtuous, alpha, heavier in the scales. Uthman after that. Uh, Ali, Abu Bakr, Umar, Umar, and then Uthman and then Ali. And not even Hassan and Hussein next. No. The other companions promised Jannah. Abdurrahman ibn Auf. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah, Talha, Sa'id, Zayd, radiyallahu anhu ajma'in. Those are the ten best people. Still, not Hassan and Hussein. After them, those people made hijrah from Mecca to Medina. And then after them, the Ansar. And then after them, the people participated in the battle of Fetha of Mecca. So no doubt. We're not going to apologize to anyone. I want to make this clear from our Aqidah. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody to understand that Hassan and Hussein don't have any wasn't. No. The Prophet said about the both of them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Hassan and Hussein are the Sayyidah Shabab al-Jannah. 
They are the leaders, the two leaders of the youngsters in Jannah. So in Jannah, you have youngsters, and in Jannah, you have older people, but not old and decrepit, but old in terms of they live longer, but you won't be old in Jannah. He said that Abu Bakr and Umar, they were the Sayyida Kahul Ahl Jannah. They are the leaders of the older people in the Jannah. So the Shahid Min al listen. We love Hassan, we love Hussein, and we love everybody from Ahl al Bayt. If a person is in our community from Ahl al Bayt and he's not taking advantage of the people, unfortunately, we let people take advantage of us. And we say, He's from Ahl al Bayt, give him your money. He's from Ahl al Bayt, listen to him. He's from Ahl al Bayt, he should be the Imam. And he's not doing anything to deserve that. So if a person is from Ahl al Bayt, or he's an Arab, or he's from Quraysh, he doesn't have any virtues if he's not working by that. He's not doing that. This is the this is the this is the lesson. The best people in the sight of Allah is the one with the religion. So, I want you guys, uh, especially young brothers, to understand that unapologetically. Second of all, this issue of Ashura very quickly, very quickly. We're in the month of Allah, Muharram, and the tenth of Muharram is the day of Ashura. We should fast on that day, on the tenth. We'll fast on that day. Allah will forgive his sins for the next whole year. And if you can fast the 9th and the 10th, that's better for you. And that day has nothing to do with the assassination of Hussein, the son of Ali bin Abi Talib. So, you younger brothers, you will see CNN, other things, your social media will bring you, you know, images of what the people do on Ashura or Shia. Now listen, it's really important and I'm gonna say it. In our class with our youngsters, when we talk about or against and we refute other religions, we always tell them, don't laugh, that you have to be sensitive to other people's religion, even if their religion doesn't make sense to you. It's not politically correct, it's not acceptable in this society for us to be people who ridicule other people's religion. It's not the deen of Allah. Plus you'll get in trouble. So we were talking about Sikhs worshiping um, monkeys and cows and uh, elephants some idols. Some of the Shabbat started up and said, no, don't laugh. We don't believe in that stuff, but we don't laugh at their religion. Now, if we don't laugh at non-Muslims and we're sensitive, what do you think about some Muslims like Shia? I don't agree with the Shiite, and I'm not afraid to say what I think about what they believe. But I'm not here to, to encourage sectarian fighting, and I'm not here for that. I'm here to do the job of anybody who's listening to know the truth from falsehood. That Dao of the Shiite in Iran and Iraq, those Rafida, that's what we're talking about. That's not from our religion. So you'll start to see these days on the day of Ashura, they're mutilating themselves and they're hitting themselves. It's not from our religion. There was no doubt that Hussein was assassinated. He was killed unjustly. And the Prophet ﷺ foretold his assassination. He told him he saw his blood going to be spilled. He saw all of that. But it's the qadr of Allah and had to happen. He was killed in a place in Iraq called Karbala. I didn't come here to explain all that story. He was killed unjustly. So for people to come now and to mourn him all of this time first, it was not from the religion. You can't mourn a person, even our kids know that. If your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your auntie, your grandfather, your sheikh, if someone died, you mourn him for three days and three nights. That's it. But if someone else dies, the person can be mourned for four months and 10 days. Who is that person? Wife. If the wife dies, the husband mourns four months, 10 days. A oh, good job. The wife mourns four months and ten days for her husband. And here you people mourning Hussein for over a thousand years still. And Hussein wasn't the only person from Ahmed Bay killed at Karbala. His relatives were killed. People with him were killed. Why is Hulu and Hussein like that? So it has nothing to do with the religion. All that religion is like Ma'aliratan. I'm not a Christian. I used to be a Christian. Anyone who looks into Christianity will say this is hamuk. It doesn't make sense. Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, 
Christmas trees. It has nothing to do with Allah and Ilah. It's just commercialism. So this thing about what these people believe is basically the same thing. And we just wanted to take this opportunity out and hardly make it clear. Everybody who's a Muslim worth his weight in salt, any and everybody from Ahl al-Bayt, especially with companions, we love them. We're going to respect them. We're going to honor them. Second thing that we wanted to mention is when we hear this term Ahl al-Bayt, people don't know who Ahl al-Bayt are. What is that Ahl al-Bayt? Is it just Ali, Hassan, Hussein? In Sayyid Bukhari, a Muslim, one of the companions, his name is Zayd ibn Arqam. May Allah be pleased with him. He was telling the Tabi'een about the Ahlul Bayt of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the people said, is his wives from Ahlul Bayt? Isn't his wives from Ahlul Bayt? He said, yes. Allah mentioned about his wives in the Quran. The ayat of the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْحِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّجْسَ يَا أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَحِّرُكُمْ تَطْئِرًا Let's talk about his wives. Zayd ibn Arqam said, he said, but Ahl al-Bayt that I'm talking about are the people who don't get sadaqah. And they're from the family of Ali, and the family of Aqil, his brother, and from the family of Jafar, his brother, and from the family of Abbas. So Ahl al-Bayt are not just people who come from the family of Hassan Hussein. Ahl al-Bayt are connected to the brothers of Ali ibn Abi Talib. So a person could be from Ahl al-Bayt if he came from any of their lineage. So it is mentioning that that clear up the misconception that some of our Muslim brothers and sisters may have. Ahl al-Bayt are just people connected to Ali and Fatima? No. No, that's not the case. The other thing and the other issue is, we talked about the amana, the amana, the trust. One of the reasons why I'm not hesitant to raise the level of consciousness of our community because as it relates to the Rafida, the people of Iran and Iraq, and some of you people come from places in that area where the khurafat of the people of the Tashayr has crept into, like people from Pakistan, Asians, Persia, that stuff has crept into some of our culture. So you'll find the Pakistani Muslim who's not a Shiite, but he calls his son Ghulam Hussein. We call him that. Fida Hussein. It's a popular name. He's not a Shiite. But that is the influence of a Tashayr in that area. And we have to be careful of things like that. I'm a man of the Sunnah. I'm going to marry my daughter to someone who curses Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman. How am I going to do that? I'm going to marry someone to a person who says, that the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be a bad lady in Zanyan Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ha 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 So this is not about sectarianism It's not about it, the Tafaruq It's not about that Right now I'm dealing with a brother from Romania He wants to marry a sister She wants to marry He wants to marry a sister Who's a Pakistani girl divorced the Romanian girl think you can just come You get married just like that No man You can marry the sister but we want to see you for some time. We want to see you around. It's not an issue that we just say, hey, just take it easy with people. You take it easy with people in some things and in some issues, the things are not there to be played with because it's in a manner. What our community understands about the, com the companions, that's in a manner, I might show them. I have these students right here. I'm going to one day die from these students. It's in a manner that if and when I die before them, these kids remember, that guy told us the Quran and the Sunnah and the way the companions understood them. That's Islam. Islam is not the Quran, the Sunnah, because the people of the Shia, they have the Quran. They took the book of Allah, the Quran, and Allah said, Allah commands you to slaughter a bakr, a cow. Shiite people say that cow is Aisha. That's the Quran. That's an ayat of the Quran. But now the question is, did our father Abu Bakr understand that ayat like that? Umar, Uthman, did Ali understand that ayat like that? So it's in a manner that the community understands you young brothers.
the position of the companions in this religion. Anybody in this religion, this masjid, he has something in his heart against any of those companions, then something is wrong with his deen. Something is wrong with his deen. So in regards to the issue of the aman, the opposite of the, the aman is like, you know, al-khiyana, having that khiyana, you know, treachery. It's a good word for khiyana. Treachery? Is that a good word? Translation. Khiyana. Amana, you take the care of the trust. Khiyana is that you break the trust. You, mean you don't take care of it. Listen. In the religion of Islam, I don't care what madhab you're on, when we do the tashahud, we spend the whole day teaching our children that when you're in the tashahud, sitting like this brother in the jalsa al istirah, you see this guy, this brother? So in the second rakah, Rasulullah used to bake his finger like that and do a tahiyyatulillah. We went through this from the narrations. Not just somebody taught us, we heard it from the narrations. Teach our brothers and our kids. And then the Nabi said that this was more hurtful to shaitan than us hitting them with an iron hadith because of the tawheed that you're saying. So every madha, we say a tahiyyatulillah, we go through that, and then we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Everybody knows that. Even some of our kids who pray without discipline, they look around like this. You know what I'm talking about. The ones who we keep saying, get disciplined, man. So we don't have to mention. Even those guys, who when they pray, our little boys, and they're looking around, when it's time, to, they know. I said, I want everybody. But these people who claim that they love Hussein and the Adam Bayt and Ashura, when they make their salams, they say, slapping their knees. Hana. Khana, Khana Amana. He was treacherous, he was treacherous, he was treacherous with the Amana. What do they mean when all of them make that salam? What do they mean? You're sitting next to one of them because you're one of those people who believe in the taqrib between the madahib. You believe in that. All of the wills of the, is lead to the center. No. No, that's not true. So when they say that he broke the amana, they're saying that Jibril, Jibril was supposed to give the Quran to Ali, but he chose not to give it to Ali, and he gave it to Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now I want to ask you, and I ask you, Billahi, I ask you, Allah, is that possible? Is it possible that Jibril can be mukallaf? To bring the Quran to Muhammad, go to somebody else, is it possible? No. To, for a Muslim to think that it's possible is kufr. Not just to mention. But I don't mean takfir of those people. Uh, some of the scholars I respect said they're the kufar. I don't mean them takfir. I say they're ulama, kufar, but they're awam like our awam from Brailwis and stuff. The stuff that our Brailwi relatives say that stuff is kufr and shit. But they don't know. Jah, jah. So I say, where is the Amana? That Jibril was the one who made the khiyana? The malaika la ya'asun Allah ma amaron. They can't do anything wrong. But that's the aqidah. And this is why I was saying, ikhwani and I continue to say, these jama'at al-Islamiyya, these Islamic political groups that are telling us we can be close with these people, you are a problem. It's a delil that you don't have wala wa bara. People were part of these groups. You don't understand what I want, Barak. My mother, Miss Mimi, and I say this all the time, is a non-Muslim. If someone came and made a tuhma, my mother, you're going to have a problem. And the wives of the Prophet are the Ummahatul Mu'mineen. How can someone say about one of them, she's a zani, a baghi, and then you come and tell the Shabbat, no, we can work with them. And I say it again, that drama that we had a few months ago with the Yehud in Palestine, the Yehud are a mushkil, a big mushkil. But any group of Muslims who think we're going to get help from his bulwak, you're a problem. It's a problem. So we want to move on, inshallah, because we don't want to make it 
We don't want to make the talk political, but we have people who are in the ears of unsuspect, unsuspecting Muslims who don't know. And that's why in the city of Leeds, unfortunately, years ago, some of our youngsters got caught in the middle of that drama. Everybody wants to do that nonsense about hurting people, but that's not our religion. We're not going to apologize about jihad or anything, but we're gonna say jihad has its people, it has its place, it has its time, it has its ahkam, it has its adat. We're not gonna to apologize to kuffar about jihad. We're gonna say, uh, well, jihad is just losing weight. No, that's how some Muslims are. You want to apologize? Jihad is yes. That's jihad enough to lose weight. But those ayahs not talking about that. But my point is, we don't want to make the tahij of our shabab just this Hamas, unbright. So there is no amana in that. And as our mother Aisha said when she gave the tafsir and she made an inkar on the people who make a ibtida in the deen. She read the ayah that Allah mentioned She said, anyone who introduces something in the religion thinking it's good, he has accused Rasulullah of making khiyana. Because Allah said, he completed the religion. But you're saying, no, he didn't. Let's introduce the mawlid. No, he didn't. Let's introduce Ashura, hitting ourselves. Let's introduce uh, Salat al Raga'ib. Let's introduce this dhikr and that dhikr and that and this. Let's introduce, you know, this, this jihad of ISIS, this stuff. And as we mentioned in the khutbah, the malaika will say, You don't know what these people introduced in your religion after you, Ya Muhammad. They introduced in the religion. Listen, for you to have. And iqtisad, just do a little, a little, you don't do a lot. But to do a little that's from the sunnah is better than doing a lot that's from uh, uh, innovation. It's better than doing a lot. Because that innovation has not been uh, legislated. We're going to get in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble. So listen, and I tell you this historically, for those who don't know. The Mawlid was introduced to the Ummah of Al Islam. Through the people who cursed Abu Bakr and Uthman and Aisha and the companions. They cursed all of the companions except 10. Except 10. They make takfir of all of the companions. And that's why some of those major scholars of our time make takfir of them. Because they make the mistakes in what is ma'loom min al deen, the durura. Allah said in the Quran, Radi Allahu anhu. But they make takvib of that and said that they irtaddu an al deen. But I don't make takvib. I'm the a'wan myself. But they say stuff kufr. So that mawlid, 100 years, 200, 300 years, you won't find any scholar mentioning the mawlid. We have people in our masjid, Maliki Madhah, Shafi Madhah, Hanafi Madhah, and our masjid, Hanbali Madhah. You won't find a single one of those great four illustrious imams given halal, haram, bidah, sunnah about the moment. You know why? It wasn't there. It wasn't there. It was introduced in the sixth century by people who curse the companions. The leader at that time thought it would be a good opportunity to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet. Anybody who comes with poetry is going to give you candy and money and food, and it became a celebration. The people in the next part, so they would do, so they started competing. And on and on and on, and now it's the religion. To the point if you come and you say, don't do this, the people say, the religion has been changed. So I ask you by Allah, I ask you by Allah, how would a Muslim who is aqil, aqil, from Hezbollah, I don't care how much a khatib the leader is, it's not about his kalam, it's about the mu'taqid and the tarikh of the people. So they gave us that. And they also gave us this thing right here. They gave us this ashura of hidden. And I want to end with this, inshallah. Historically, for those who don't know, when Al-Islam was spreading, the leader of the Munafiqeen, 
during the time of the Prophet wasallam, his name was Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Sulur. He was a big troublemaker. Allahu min Allahi ma yastah. Big troublemaker that guy. He used to cause a lot of problems and ever trouble. Oh, when he saw that they couldn't defeat the Muslims externally, he was the one who started bigging up Ali like that and Ahlul Bayt. At the end of doing the fitna with Ali and and Muawiyah, and that this man started coming. He started saying Ali was this until the people started saying that. Ali was Allah reincarnated. Ali is Allah reincarnated. What religion is that? The cornerstone of Al-Islam is at tawheed Man qala la ilaha illallah nafa'atu yawman min dahrihi. Anybody who said la ilaha illallah is going to benefit you. You may go to hellfire. You may. But if you do, you're coming out. You won't be in there forever. And you may not go to the hellfire. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Kana Akhir Kalebi Ila 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 Allah, Dakhla Jannah. The last word that came out of his mouth, La Ila, go to Jannah. That's the cornerstone. In Allah, La Yu, La Yafir and Yushrika, in Allah, La Yafir and Yushrika, be who Yafir Maduna, Nadi Kalima Yasha. Allah won't forgive that you make shit with him, but he'll forgive any and everything other than that. Killed a hundred people who believed in Allah. Allah will forgive, can forgive you. You killed the companions. Allah can forgive that. But if you die on shit, it's a problem. So our religion is a religion of a tawheed. And our kids are the ones who come and the people of the Allah reincarnated. Or the sheikh, or the son of the sheikh, Allah reincarnated. What's that? That's a whole It's not acceptable. So this is what we want to present to you, brothers. I just wanted to let you know that the ulama of Islam in the past, they were rough and they were tough with people who look at this issue with Hussein. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was one of the most severest people in his kalam against the people who killed Hussein. He said, whoever killed them, him, and whoever is pleased with his murder, May the curse of Allah be upon him. And it's from the Aqid of Islam that we don't curse people who are living or dead. Yani, we don't do that. The disbelievers are cursed. The evildoers are cursed. But we don't say you're cursed. Cur we stay away from that. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Bhutan was tough. People who killed him, people who pleased with him, and that was what the Ulama were upon. Abdullah ibn Abbas was at Hajj, and some people came, and a man asked Abdullah ibn Abbas. And this man was from the Khawarij, those people, the Mutashaddideen, on themselves, on the other people. The ones who the Prophet said about them, Halak al Mutanatti'oon, Halak al Mutanatti'oon, Halak al Mutanatti'oon. The mutashid, the rough people, they're going to be destroyed. So the man said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, and they were making hajj. The man hit the mosquito, and the blood came out. And when you're in Ihram, you can't hunt, can't kill fool, can't chop down trees, you can't get married, can't have relationships, akramakumullah, things you can't do, you're in Ihram. So the man asked Ali ibn Abi Talib, Abdullah ibn Abbas, what's the hukum of a person who kills the mosquito? And Ibn Abbas knew him because he dealt with the Khawarij. He helped to bring many of them back to the fold of what the companions were. And he knew this man was from those who stayed on the other side. And he said to him, where are you from? The man said, from Al Iraq. He said, from where? He said, from Karbala. He said, you people assassinated and chopped the head off of the grandson of the Nebi and spilled his blood. And you ask him about the blood of the mosquito, the da'uda. And he got up and he left, making him car. And what that man did, not only did they kill Hussein, they took his neck off, he chopped his head off, and paraded it around the Muslim empire to make the other people afraid. Don't you make khuruj. Don't you do this. 
So he deserved to be the leader of the Muslims of that time. We love him, we honor him, and everybody else from Adam Bayt, even today. Someone has the nesab of being with the Nabi, Umar radi Allah anhu went, and he asked Ali ibn Abi Talib, let me marry your daughter, Um Kaltum. He said, but you're old, you, I know you don't really want to marry. He said, it's not that I don't want to marry, but I heard that the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everybody's lineage is going to be of no benefit, yawm al qiyamah, except what's from my lineage. And he wanted to share in that lineage of Ahlul Bayt. Was well, honorable, but I again make it clear. Ahlul Bayt and you're Kad Kadab, Ahlul Bayt and you're stealing the money. You Ahlul Bayt and you a gangster. You Ahlul Bayt and you a problem. Then we're gonna say Ahlul Bayt, but we're not gonna respect you like, like that. Wallahi, Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl. If you look at the history of the Arabs in Jahiliyyah, Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl, in terms of Rajula, a Rajul in the Mizan. I don't know these people who are similar to Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl. Like in terms of manliness. How some of those Arabs were, you know, in terms of just being men. The politicians, the people we know in, in today. Those people were heavy in terms of being men. But in terms of the mizan, the scale, with Allah, Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl, nothing. Umay ibn Khalaf, they're nothing. Because they're kuffar, but they're from Quraysh, and they're Abu Lahab is an Arabi, a Sleel, he's a pure Arabi. What's the benefit? I had bait and you don't know your religion. Okay, if you want to stop right here, inshallah, just avoid the two extremes. One extreme, the Rafidah, the Rawafid. They refuse their companions. Iran, they don't like them. And then the other antithesis, the Nawasibah. They're the other antithesis. They're the people who hate Ahlul Bayt. So they love them overboard and they hate them. And these people were found in a sham. A lot of them in sham. They support Muawiyah. And because Muawiyah was against Ali in the fitna, that all of those companions were Mujtahidun. And Allah is pleased with them. And they're all in Jannah. It's not for us to talk about that issue and to make a tanakkus or a ta'an in any of them. They're Mujtahidun. And the Mujtahid, if he gets it right, he gets two reward. If he gets it wrong, he gets one reward. But that's the point. The Rawafid. No, not my friend. You curse the companion, I'm my friend. And I can't get close to you. Lakum deen or kum And the Nawasa, hey Ahlul Bayt, you're a problem too. And I remember when I, before I came here in um, 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 Liverpool, there was a big masjid in Liverpool. 5,000 people in Juma. And in that area, we had a lot of people. So we used to have to do the janazah for people from Iran. Every single month we were doing a lot of janazahs in that place. Especially for the Shabbat of Liverpool because they were getting shot and stabbed. And one year we did like 25 janazahs. Crazy. Whenever the Iranian person would come, I watched the body. Because Allah didn't send me to open up his chest to see if he cursed the companions or not. That's not my job. There's a Muslim from Iran. I have personal fun. I don't know his family. We got him from the morgue, we got him from the hospital. I watched the body. But whenever I do that, I get on the member before the janazah. And on the member, after Salat al we talk about the companions and the position of the companions. And everybody knew I do that because if something was important during the time of Rasulullah, he would get on the member on other than Friday. So when he got on the member, the companions knew this is important. So we want to bring that sunnah back to life. And also, anytime we got on the member, they knew this person is from Iran. And we wash him and bury him. And that's a lot to deal with him. But like I told you, my mother's a non Muslim. And I love her. If someone in here said that my mother does the things that they accuse Aisha of doing, well, like, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be smoke in this masjid. If the person said that my mother does what they said the wife of the Nabi is doing, we wouldn't accept that tuhma on one of our daughters. And they say that about the Prophet's wife, Allahi, before that thing hits Aisha, you hit her husband with that. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kind of really. That's why I said that deen, that dawah is, is hump. It, Christianity. Okay, 
you guys have any questions, you put your questions forward. Inshallah, if not, we let you go, you get your grub on. You guys got any questions? Invite anybody? Go ahead, little man. Uh, how many wives does Prophet Ibrahim get? How many wives did Prophet Ibrahim get? Yeah. I wasn't at the marriages, man. <laughs> I wasn't at the marriages. I knew that he had one wife, and that was his wife, Sarah. Sarah. As for Hajar, she was not his wife. She was a slave. She was a slave. Uh, where his right hand possessed. And she was the one who gave him his son, Ismail. That's in our religion, and that's in their book, in their religion, Jews and Christians. So now, when they come and they accuse the Prophet وسلم, of having a son, Ibrahim, to a slave girl, or we have my malakat, you know, the right, they criticize that, and then we become defensive and we apologize and say, yes, we're sorry, we're sorry. Well, you know that, we, that they forgot that in the book, they didn't take it out, and we apologize. When in fact, we say, no, we don't apologize. We don't apologize. First of all, that's in your book. And even if it's not in your book, there's some um, intelligent explanation of the benefit of this institution. So the wife of Ibrahim, the one we know about, my brother, her name was Sarah. She had a tremendous story in the Bible and in Islam. And Ismail's mother, her name was Hajj, and she was a slave. And Maryam, Maria, the Coptic, was a slave too. She wasn't his wife, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or radiallahu Yes, my brother, Abdullah. Um, Thank you so much for reminding us of the position of the, uh, of the companions of the Prophet It's really important to, to remember their, their position. Uh, I have one comment on how we can communicate or how we can be friends with the, the, the Shia sect of Islam. Uh, the thing in Medina as in other places in the world where um, Sunni and Shia coexist and they tolerate together, uh, I think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the Quran that he reminded us to treat the non-Muslims in a good manner. What about the Muslims we, we, with the different, different opinions? We don't agree with them uh, cursing the, our mother Aisha or cursing any of the prophets uh, or the companions, I'm sorry. But isn't that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge them, not for us? We can also be friends, we can be careful. That's a good question, Ahi, and I'm glad that you mentioned it, to be honest, because it's important for the uh, message to go out very clear that we're not calling to, like, uh, having uh, an adawa uh, where it's, you know, sectarianism and all of this. But we have a principle in our religion, and that principle says, Men ahabba lillahi, Anyone who loves for Allah and he hates for Allah. So we love people and things because Allah loves those people and those things. And it's possible that you can hate something and not hate the person. So I have a son born in Medina, went to America, was in practice of religion. I hate the way my son was acting, but I love my son. So the same thing. I can hate the, the shayu, the person of the companions, and the mother, the wife, the prophet. I can hate that, but I don't have to hate the person. So that's possible, that's possible. But now the question is, what natural, normal person finds it easy to be the bosom buddy of a person who has that position towards the important people in Islam? It's a problem. Then there's another principle missing out in Islam. That's the principle of boycotting people and avoiding people because of some evil that they're doing. Because the prophet didn't want that evil to spread and Muslims have to take this into consideration. And all of these things will determine how we deal with them. I don't say just cut everybody off, but you have to, the Nabi is getting ready to pray the janazah. He said, did this man owe money? Say yes. He said, pray on your companion. And he left him. Why did he do that? So that people wouldn't find it easy to die and you are medium, you better pay that money. So he wanted to make a tahvir, a dajjal, it's coming, a dajjal. He said, don't go to go the other way. Because if you sit down and you say, you know, it's very interesting, you know, this guy, 
the jowl of bringing this rain down and that I want to see more. And before you know it, you'll sit there and the disease, you think Corona is a problem. Corona, the disease of a Dijal's Kofa or a Tashayu. So I can't, I don't have control over you people, but my own children and family, I put up a wall like, you know, you get the um, vaccine. Anybody who cursed the command, I look at it as my mother, myself. Anybody cursed my mother, Miss Mamie Stark? <sighs> that is war, it's war time now. My kids are gonna raise the flag. BLM, they gonna have, they gonna raise the flag, it's gonna say BLM, it's gonna be red, black, and green, and it's gonna be some mat. What about the wives of the Rasul? And Nabi you Ola bin Mu'minin, and then Fusihim, Wazwaju, Ummahatu. Aish is our mother, according So let's get that aqidah of the center for this Ummah, and don't be like these groups be telling us, no, it's okay, everybody is the same tolerance. Yeah, but don't break the law and don't be a person who some people you can give them down and you can help you can be a nice person. Because I have been to countries like Lebanon and everybody is nice to everybody. And you don't know who's who and people are nice to people. So you can't walk around looking like, you know, like that. Been to that place. Been to Bahrain. You don't know who's who in, in the man of Bahrain. You don't know who's who. Khuba. This is there dealing with the people. All right, Akhwani, inshallah, we have the grub ready for you. May Allah bless you guys. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Abdullah, we're going to sit together, man.